transformer winding hotspot is something that's important to monitor for several different reasons, but the most important reason is the winding hotspot is what controls the aging on the transformer. For every six to seven degrees C increase in winding hotspot temperature, the aging rate on a transformer roughly doubles. So as a result, it's important for you to understand, first of all, how are you measuring or uh, identifying what the winding hotspot temperature is and how can you make sure that you're making the right choice for the type of transformer that you're purchasing. So the first method for identifying what the winding hotspot temperature is, is a gauge. Uh, so most power transformers are going to have two gauges. You have a top oil temperature gauge and you have a winding hotspot gauge. Actually, those two gauges mechanically are essentially exactly the same. The only difference is the thermal probe on a top oil temperature gauge just goes into a thermal pocket uh, and just directly measures the temperature. On a winding hotspot gauge, it goes into a heated pocket. So that heated pocket or heated thermal well has the heating element that's wrapped around it connected to one of the bushing CTs. The bushing CT provides the power to the heating element and as the transformer load goes up, that's gonna supply more current which creates more heat and artificially elevates uh, the temperature of that thermal well so that the gauge approximates what the winding temperature is. Clearly it's a, uh, it's a process that's not gonna be uh, as accurate as what you could have if you had a direct measurement, but it gives you a pretty good approximation. The tuning of that process is either done by changing the tap on the CT, or sometimes they'll have a tuning resistor inside the control cabinet and you can tune uh, how much current is going to the heating element. However, the, uh, the next step up in method of identifying your winding hotspot temperature provides seven benefits uh, over the traditional mechanical gauge approach. Uh, so that step up is an electronic temperature monitor and the first improvement is the accuracy. The accuracy of an electronic temperature monitor is gonna be uh, much more precise. So you're taking the detailed design uh, information from the transformer manufacturer, which includes the gradient information. The gradient information is going to enable you to simulate, excuse me, calculate what the winding hotspot temperature is uh, and give you a good approximation of that both during the load uh, fluctuations and also during steady state conditions. The second benefit is an electronic temperature monitor can be uh, supplied in a fail safe design. So if anything happens to the device, it uses normally closed contacts. So by default, it's gonna turn on your cooling. If you compare that to a winding hotspot gauge, the problem with gauges quite often, if you get moisture into the gauge, uh, the needle will stick and as a result, it won't turn on the fans, uh, which can accelerate the aging on the transformer. The third thing is, the electronic temperature monitor does not need a heated thermal well. It only uses the top oil temperature thermal well. So with one thermal probe going into that uh, transformer, you're gonna eliminate the need for a second penetration, which reduces the potential for leaks and also saves a little bit of cost in the manufacturing of the transformer. Uh, the, th the fourth improvement is the fact that this device uh, can connect up to multiple bushing CTs so you can calculate additional winding temperatures. So for this device you can monitor all three phases. Uh, so if you do have an imbalanced load it doesn't really matter. You're, you're monitoring all of them and you can clearly identify which one truly is the hottest as opposed to just guessing and only measuring one winding. The next uh, improvement on this is it has electronic communication that can provide the data to uh, customers on a remote basis, whether it connects up to SCADA or a DCS system, or in some cases just connecting up to an IIoT connection, allows you to see all the information remotely without having to drive out to the substation. And the sixth advantage is this also provides detailed data uh, 
a record of all of that internal saved in memory. So if you do want to download that data, even if you don't have a remote connection, you can always come up and see what's my load history, what's my temperature history, and access that. The mechanical gauge does have a little bit of history recording, which is a drag hand. So as the needle goes up, it will push that drag hand up. And then when you go out there, you can write down what it was as its maximum since someone last looked at it, and then you would have to mechanically uh, reset that needle. But this is going to give you dramatically more resolution. And then finally, the, uh, the last benefit of this is it also takes some of that information and converts it into a more useful format by calculating what your insulation loss of life is. Uh, so if you're trying to use the data to better manage the asset, uh, knowing what your insulation loss of life is is a big advantage. So clearly you can see why a lot of utilities and industrial customers have converted from using uh, electromechanical gauges and simulated approaches to using electronic temperature monitoring devices. But we still have some customers that say, okay, this is really, really good provided that the thermal model is truly accurate for what the hotspot is. So the desire is, how do I validate that the thermal model is truly doing what it should do? The way that we can accomplish that is by putting a probe into the winding. Uh, clearly you would not be able to run a copper connection into the winding because that would cause the transformer to fail. So what we use is a, a fiber optic connection. So this fiber goes into the transformer winding. We modify one of the spacers by uh, cutting out and inserting a disc into the radial spacer. The disc uh, has the fiber optic probe tip, which is the measurement point, and we're sending a signal down the light uh, and then reading what that, sending a light pulse down the fiber and reading what the temperature is at the tip. The fiber probe then connects, uh, gets routed inside the transformer up to the weldment. This is gonna be welded onto the side of the transformer. Uh, the connection connects on the inside of that. And then on the outside, you're gonna have a fiber optic extension that connects from the tank wall penetration up to the measurement device. So uh, here's an example of an electronic temperature monitor. This does both the modeling, so you can monitor, you can model multiple windings, and it also gives you the ability to directly measure multiple windings. The advantage of this is if you have a critical transformer, uh, like a bulk power transformer, the cost of adding this is not that substantial, so customers may want to just include it on, on all of the bulk power units. Uh, we also have customers that only want to do it on the first of a thermal duplicate family. So if they're going to order six or eight transformers of the same design from a particular factory, they'll go, they may want to put fiber optics into the first of that grouping to validate the model and then they, they copy the gradient rise information over to the other units. So clearly uh, a best of both worlds approach with this product. So hopefully I've given you an ex a good explanation of all of the different methods for identifying what your winding hotspot temperature is and an appreciation of how important it is to make sure that you have uh, something that's a reliable measurement. If you do have any additional questions, please contact us. Our sales staff and application staff would be more than happy to help you out with any reference documents or provide more details as you may need. Thanks.